functioning tonight we're going to talk about libido and sexual interest but each stage has its own set of circumstances um, and things that we can do like if you have difficulty in arousal there are things we can do about that if you have a difficulty in the quality of your orgasm we can do something about that too so your libido, your libido is affected by many things. We're going to really concentrate on hormones, neurotransmitters, and medications. But of course, you can't deny emotions, diet, and sleeping. And these are the um, hormones that go into affecting your libido. We're going to, again, concentrate on estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. But pregnenolone, DHEA, and prolactin are also play a huge role. And you have to think of hormones as a symphony. You can't just isolate one hormone and just say, okay, well, we're going to give you that, like they do in birth control pills or, or synthetic hormones, you know, where they just give you estrogen or they just give you progesterone. So we have to look at these hormones individually. And when we think of libido, we really, for both men and women, we think of testosterone as being um, most important. Causes of low testosterone in women, menopause, childbirth, birth control pills, um, adrenal insufficiency, endometriosis, depression, emotional trauma, and many more. However, you can't overlook how estrogen and progesterone figure into this as well. You could either have too much estrogen, too little progesterone. There's something called um, an estrogen dominance. There's something called an estrogen to testosterone balance. And, we're, and here at Patient Medical, we take into all those accounts. Estrogen balance can cause vaginal dryness vaginal atrophy, and uterine contractions during and after orgasm. So really, how much do you really want to have sex if you're in pain? What do you do for vaginal dryness? I have a client who has this problem. Well, it, it, as balancing their estrogens is one. And then also neurotransmitters play a huge role. Also, just, it also you'll see in a little bit. Alcoholism, other drugs, xenoestrogens, all figure into it. Stress. Well, it's definitely a libido killer. It increases your cortisol and interferes with your testosterone. And I just want to take a moment to talk a little bit about this topic. Because we can talk about adrenal insufficiency um, probably for hours here. Uh, your adrenal glands are two small walnut shaped glands that sit on top of each kidney. They put out um, a substance called cortisol. Cortisol affects many, many different things in your life. Um, it interferes with testosterone, it regulates your thyroid, it regulates your sugar, it regulates your lipid metabolism. With increased cortisol, it also decreases estrogen. Um, also in the adrenal glands, there's a substance called DHEA. If your adrenal glands are fatigued or insufficiently working, what happens is DHEA is a hormone that after you reach menopause, it primarily puts out the, your female hormones. If your adrenal glands are exhausted and you don't have enough DHEA, you're not putting out even what you could be putting out once you reach menopause. Because we do still produce hormones once we reach menopause, it's just at a lesser rate. So things, what do we do for adrenal insufficiency? Well, we diagnose it by a saliva test. Um, we ask you to do saliva for four points in a day. We actually see the ratio on where your, where your cortisol levels are. Um, we use vitamins supplementation, we use mineral supplementation, we can use DHEA, we can use bioidentical hormones, um, and 
and we can get you into a much better shape. But you cannot, without, with everything we can do, you still need to find some point of relaxation. You need to have 15 minutes a day that's just for you. Even if it means getting up 15 minutes early, you have to meditate, you have to pray, you could get a massage, you could go for a walk, but you have to find those 15 minutes in a day. And of course, you know, you can't deny the other parts of, you know, your relationship. How good are you communicating? Do you need therapy? Um, will it be beneficial? Are you having enough time? You know, are the kids always around? Are you always running? One's running to baseball, one's running to soccer practice, you know, and, and you'll meet up at like 11 o'clock at night. You're exhausted by then. There's no time. Alcohol is a very important um, topic. One drink actually is known to increase your libido. Once you go beyond that one drink, it actually decreases your libido. It causes vaginal dryness in women. Um, it's difficult for a man to maintain an erection, to get an erection and maintain it. A woman is very difficult. She may not be able to um, achieve an orgasm, or it won't be even of the same strength. Other things we have to talk about, SSRIs. How many people know of people who are on Prozac, Paxil? Um, half of the people on SSRIs report a loss of libido. Even if you stop the SSRIs, the chances of you having resolution of your libido back to the way you were is only 30%. Um, birth control pills, what they do is they decrease, they increase something called sex hormone binding globulin. What sex hormone binding globulin does is it binds available testosterone. If your sex hormone binding globulin goes up and you have, don't have enough testosterone available, your libido is down. Um, antibiotics that aren't on the list. But we know that antibiotics decrease the amount of um, gut bacteria. If you don't have good quality gut bacteria, you're not making enough serotonin. If you don't make enough serotonin, serotonin is a neurotransmitter, and its basic function is to increase um, estrogen. If you don't have enough serotonin, you're not going to have enough estrogen. If you don't have enough estrogen, and you're not going to be um, your libido is not going to be what it could be. Um, other drugs to consider, and you think, well, you know, how much is it really? Caffeine causes vaginal dryness, anabolic steroids throw off your own production of testosterone, um, and there are women that take anabolic steroids as well. L-tryptophan, now that's, a, that's a, um, just a regular substance that we use uh, for calming, but it can make you too calm. And of course, surroundings and distractions. Also, marijuana and cocaine are a problem. Obesity, um, this affects the amount of estrogen that you have, and it converts your estrogen well, it converts your testosterone, it aromatizes your testosterone into a substance that there are three kinds of estrogen. There's estri estradiol, there's estriol, and there's estrone. Estrone is associated with breast cancer and, and ill health. And what obesity does is it affects the estrogen metabolism and causes you to make more estrone in your body. Poor quality food, sugar, high sugar, high, high saturated fats, decrease the amount of progesterone that you have available. There are foods that contain antibiotics that causes us to have poor gut health, which we just talked about. 
Low manganese has been associated with low libido. Low vitamin C actually has been shown to cause an increase in anxiety, as well as something called approach anxiety. So when somebody's approaching you, your anxiety goes up. And we find that having a low vitamin C level is, is pretty pertinent. Xenoestrogens. We have to take a little bit of time because, um, as you saw, Megan did a great job in, in preparing something for you. Does everybody know what xenoestrogens are? They're chemicals in our world that act like estrogens. And they fool the body into thinking that there are estrogens, but they're not. And so where are they? Well, they're in pesticides. DDT is no longer used in the United States. It's banned. But it is not banned in other countries. Where does, like for example, China has no problem using DDT. The majority of our apples come from China. Um, synthetic hormones, uh, bioidentical, um, not bioidentical, birth control pills, or hormones fed to animals. And that's why it's so important if you're going to eat organically and you can't afford to eat organically, eat organic meat. Because that's where there are most of the uh, synthetic hormones. Plastics. Um, you say, well, where are they in plastics? They're called phthalates, and they're found in ink, foil, food wrappers, baby formula, chips, cheese. Um, there's something called BPAs that line uh, cans and, and containers, beverage containers, as in your water bottles. You know, everybody walks around with those Poland Spring bottles. Well, they have BPAs leaching into them. And um, even the supply pipes, water supply pipes. So our xenoestrogen, what they do is they fool the body into thinking that you have estrogen, and they convert the estrogen, and it makes you to become estrogen dominant or estrogen toxic. Okay. So what are bioidentical hormones? Bioidentical hormones are made from soy or yams, and they are the exact hormones that your body makes. When you get synthetic hormones, if this is the receptor and you get a synthetic hormone, the synthetic hormone kind of fits into the receptor. So your body, you could, I'm sorry. Goodness. So you, what your body does is it gets fooled into thinking, um, that you have the right estrogen, but you don't. How do we test it? There's three ways that we test hormones. We test blood, and we test saliva as well. And why do we test saliva? Because when I take your blood, I will, tell, I will know exactly what your hormone is at the time we are taking your blood. But what saliva does for us is it tells us what your tissue level is. So we take the information from your blood test, and we take the information from your saliva test, and we make hormones specifically for your body. Because your needs are going to be different than your needs, than your needs, than my needs. Because we're all at a different phase of life, we're all at a different amount and dose. Um, I may need more estrogen, you may need more testosterone, you may need more progesterone. You know, you may have sleep difficulties, so we may give you progesterone by mouth as opposed to a cream. Um, okay, Jim. So this is what we were just talking about. And we can give we can give bioidentical hormones in either creams, oral pills, or shots. Rarely do we use shots. Um, we use basically a cream. You put it on in the morning. Um, you usually rub it onto your inner thighs in the morning for about a minute to two minutes, and you go on your day. So what? Why? Why bioidentical? Because they help you with your weight. They increase your memory. They help you sleep better. 
They decrease your hot flashes. They, they're, they're receptors in your heart that will work exactly. They increase collagen, they increase your skin, texture and tone. So what's wrong with synthetics? Well, that's what I was just talking about. Everybody's different. When you go to the gynecologist and they give you a, a pill for progesterone or progestin, it's 20 milligrams. You may need 30, but that pill is 20. And then you, they don't know, like, why isn't it working? Why aren't you feeling better? Well, we make it exactly for you with a compounding pharmacist. 